as deleted photo because that's that's the photo, that's the property. Uh, if you'd like to change the exterior main photo, it's actually fairly easy. Pick the photo that you'd like to designate. So I'm going to double click on this one, and there's a little radio button that says exterior main. Click on it. Once you click done, it saves that, and now you're going to see a little purple flag that designates that particular photo as the exterior main. And you can always change it if you have a different one that's better. Okay? So once you're finished with all of this, make sure you save your changes, and then you can hit continue, and you'll continue on. All right? Any questions on Media Connect? Okay. That's basically the upgrade to Keystone. Now I will tell you, I don't have any screen captures to show you, but I will tell you that Keystone is also undergoing a renovation. So by the end of the year, they're going to be mapping out a new Keystone product. And then by about second quarter or so of next year, they'll probably be beta, test, beta testing this new Keystone product. It'll still be, in essence, Keystone. It's just going to have a facelift. It's going to be a little more user-friendly. The screens might look a little differently. We're going to work on removing fields that are just not used, that were just inherited from the old system, um, things like that, just kind of cleaning it up a bit. Okay, so you'll see some changes in Keystone, hopefully not too uh, dramatic changes, but you'll see some changes, and we'll give you plenty of communication before we do roll it out live. Let's hop into Key uh, to Matrix now. So Matrix, there's quite a bit in Matrix here that I would like to talk about. However, in the, the time that we have, I'm probably going to be able to focus on just a few things. Uh, after I focus on the stuff that I'd like to teach you, if you have anything that you'd like to know about the Matrix system that I didn't cover, by all means, we'll open it up to questions and I'll address those questions at that time. So on the uh, Matrix home screen, now you all have been working with Matrix for a while here uh, since we rolled out with the uh, major upgrade back in December. So the widgets are there to assist you. I'm just going to point them out. For those of you who really have just not done anything with the widgets, I think they'll be really helpful for you. First of all, these widget windows can actually be closed. So if there are a bunch of widgets open on your home screen and you just don't use half of them, just go ahead and close out the ones that you don't need. It just automatically Mac minimizes it, pops it right into that widget box. If you ever need it in the future, just grab it and drag it back out and it'll open it up for you again, okay? So the ones that I tend to use on a regular basis would be this MLS Quick Search, because it does allow me to go in, type in the MLS number, don't just find the listing for me, no matter what database it's in. Um, there's also a CARTS. Now the reason why it's called carts is now you also have multiple shopping carts, which by popular demand we've gone ahead and added into the matrix system. I'll show you how to use the multiple carts. And the My Favorite Search is also very handy. It can plot up to 15 favorite searches on right here on your home screen so that you can go in and quickly run the, uh, the full search for it and see what's new. Usually agents will reserve this space for doing like an office inventory or any of the areas that they're farming. Okay, that's really more for the favorite searches. You can put your customer searches there as well, um, but you know, once you get too many of them, it's really no point in putting it there because you'll just have to go into My Matrix to search for the rest of them. Okay, so it does plot up to 15 of them right here on My Favorite Searches. Now there is a really nice widget that I will talk about here, even though I personally don't use it because I'm not an agent. The recent email plus visitors is really nice to have open on your home screen. It will tell you that in the past 30 days, these are the most recent 10 visitors to their emails, okay? So if you have been emailing a, a buyer and they're just not looking at the emails, you'll know right away that they haven't looked at it in a while. And then you may want to give them a call or something like that and just say, hey, I noticed that you asked me to send this and you're just not looking at it. Are you not interested? in this criteria or whatever it is. And it kind of opens up the lines of communications for you. Up at the very top of this screen and at the top of every single matrix tab, you'll see this little window. And this window is called the speed bar. It's kind of hard to see because it's a little faded, but once I start typing in there, you'll see it right away. Now, occasionally when you do log into matrix, and this will not happen for everybody, but you know, sometimes you might have accidentally minimized it. If that's the case and you log into Matrix and you don't see that speed bar, most likely you did somehow close it, okay, just like I did here. So if you don't see the speed bar, just look to the right of your name, where is it working as, open up that arrow and your speed bar will be right there. It's a way to minimize it. Some people don't like to see it, it bothers them, so they just go ahead and close it out. So what is it for? 
I will tell you what it's for. So the speed bar is actually a quick way for you to look up listings. However, the way that you look up listings is done in code. Okay? I will show you a cheat sheet, and then I'm going to show you how I use the speed bar. If you look in the little gray question mark to the left of that speed bar, this is, of course, the help menu. You click on that, it's going to explain what the speed bar does, and it gives you some examples of the speed bar. In addition, you also have, for a full list of available speed bar codes and examples, please see the speed bar codes document. If you click on it, you can download this nine-page PDF document, and it becomes your cheat sheet on how to type in information into that speed bar. Now, the speed bar, because it's restricted by space, there's only so many fields that it will actually show you. And in fact, it only shows you the top 21 commonly used searching fields. These were all listed right here on the speed bar codes document. So if I wanted to search for a townhome, I can use the code TH, right here, TH, right into the speed bar, and it's gonna tell me, tell the system that I'm searching for townhouses. If I wanted to find properties that are active, the code for active would be the letter A. If I wanted to search for list price, I would put a dollar sign in front of the amount. Now, the amounts that you put into that speed bar is actually the new way of doing the amounts, so you drop the last three zeros, okay? So in this example, if I was looking for a properties between 350 to 475,000, I would just put in a dollar sign 350 dash 475. I wouldn't put in the extra three zeros. Um, the plus and the minus signs also apply, so if you're looking at greater than, less than, that's also there. And as you scroll down, you'll see other fields that are available, other criteria that are available on how to represent each. Now I'm going to pause right here because it's talking about bedrooms and bathrooms. If you just put a number in, nothing preceding, just a number, it's automatically going to read the number as a bedroom. So I plugged in two plus. That's going to tell the system that I'm looking for properties with two or more bedrooms right in there, okay? If I put in two numbers, one after another, separated with a space, it's going to read the first number as a bedroom and the second number as a bathroom. And we've coded it that way because that's how we normally search, bedrooms first and then bathrooms. So you separate it with a space. If you wanted to switch the order, or if you just wanted to search for bathrooms and you didn't want to search necessarily by bedrooms, you must use a special designator for each of those. If you put it out of that order, then you need to designate which is which. So for instance, if you're searching for bath first and then beds, you can put in bath, space two, space, beds, space three, and that will look for two bathrooms, three bedrooms. Okay, so it, it flips the order. Otherwise, if you put three space two, it will look automatically for three bedrooms and two bathrooms. If you're, another way to do it is baths is actually uh, BA is the shortcut for it. Okay, so I just want to pause that because it does get everything else fairly simple except for those two fields. They have to be put in a certain order. Otherwise, the system will read it incorrectly. And there are other fields here. So as you scroll through the list, you can see what you can type in and how you can type in that information. So now I'm gonna go in and use my speed bar. I'm not gonna use it to search for properties just yet. I am going to use it more as a revising tool. So if I go in here, and let's say I'm looking for properties in a certain area. So this is how you all would normally go in and do a search. Go into general, whatever database you want. You plug in your criteria. So this is a client who's looking for a home in Loudoun County. Let's say they're looking for a detached, okay, and for sale, and they have their price range. We're gonna plug in, let's say, 450 to 650. Now, the prices. These are done in thousands, so you do drop the last three zeros. If, however, you're looking for rentals, or you just don't like that the system automatically drops those three zeros for you, you may uncheck this box to the right of that field, and that will actually tell the system that now I'm gonna type in exactly what I want. So if I have this box unchecked, then I can actually go in here and type in my extra three zeros. Okay, and it will search for exactly that that I have typed in. The reason why we have that there is really more to assist those who are searching for rental properties. So if you're looking for rentals, you would say for sale, no. And let's say your rental price is between 
1500 and 1800. Okay, if you had left it with the default of that box checked off, then it's going to look for a million five to a million exactly. eight. Okay, exactly. which is frustrating. Now you could, you could also always use a decimal point. So this fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars can also be represented with one point five dash one point eight. But most of us don't think that way, me included. So if I did fifteen hundred dash eighteen hundred and just uncheck that box, it's going to look for fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred per month. Okay, it's not going to be in thousands. All right, so let me flip this back change it to what I had it originally. Actually, let me do this, 450 to 500. Okay, I'll leave that checked off. And I'm gonna search for Ashford. Okay, now I'm doing this on purpose, so before you say, oh, you're not gonna get anything, I may not. So I'm gonna put in my criteria, I'm looking for four or more bedrooms, I'm gonna look for uh, three or more baths, Oops. and my garage space, oh, let's say two or more. Okay. Of course, you can add anything else that you want to in your regular search. Now, I will give you a tip. Remember earlier I said that the speed bar only shows you the top 21 commonly used searching fields? The way we pick those fields are actually right here on this screen. Okay? We actually look at the statistics behind each of these fields, and we say, well, statistically, you know, these are the top 21 fields that agents tend to use when they're doing their searches. So those are the fields that we lifted and added into the speed bar. So that's how you get a sense of what fields are represented in the speed bar, in addition to using that cheat sheet that I showed you. Now, legal subdivision, postal city, and zip code, for some reason, didn't make that cut because there were other fields that were uh, had higher usage. Advertised subdivision did make the cut, okay? So I'm going to uh, do it by postal city, and I'm gonna show you how this looks like. So let's go ahead and run our search. Take a look at my speed bar. I know it's a little hard to read in the back, so I'll read it out to you. It has A space D space dollar sign 450-500 space 4 plus space 3 plus space LO space sale and so on. Okay, So it's representing my criteria. Actives detached between 450 and 500, 4 or more bedrooms, 3 or more bathrooms in Loudoun County, 4 sale with a garage of 2 or more and with a basement. Now where did that postal city go? Remember it didn't make the cut? So it actually sits, anything that's other, that didn't make that cut, sits in that other criteria section. If you just hover your mouse over it, you'll see the other criteria that you have added to your search. Okay? Now, even if it's not one of the um, normally populated, say, added. Swimming pool, or, yes, no, high school, so yes. Would show exactly, it would show an other. Okay. Um, so now I've got my result, and I've only got eight. And if I wanted more, I would normally go down to the revise button, revise my search, and make my revisions on the previous screen, hit search again, and I'll get my new results. Instead of doing that, if you guys try to use the speed bar, I guarantee you, you're gonna love it. Once you start getting used to it, you gotta practice with it a little bit. So, assuming that we know the codes because we've looked at the, the speed bar uh, codes document, that cheat sheet that I showed you, or if you had it printed out next to you. You can go in here and make whatever revisions you need to right into that speed bar. So let's say we wanted to change our price. Instead of 450 to 500, let's change it 450 to 600. Okay, so I'm changing the 5 to a 6, hit the enter key on my keyboard, and now it's quickly revised it for me. Okay, so it's a big time saver. I know it's just by a few seconds, but every few seconds adds up. And it's actually going to be a lot easier for you to actually visualize it right there. You can see it, and eventually you'll start to read it in such a way that you'll actually understand what it says. Can you save the speed bar as a frequent search? You can save it as a shortcut, and I'm going to show you why you would do that and how you would do that. Okay. So you see now I've expanded my search. I've got 51. Okay. So you can quickly use it to revise. If I wanted to add additional fields to this search, remember it has to be one of the top 21 commonly used search fields, which is in that cheat sheet. So if I wanted to uh, narrow it down further by um, whatever else was on that top 21, I could just type right into that speed bar, okay? So that's how you would use the speed bar to revise. You all have questions on revising using that speed bar. Okay, I'm gonna show you the other thing. So you let's more say- than, You have more than one other. I have a lot of things regarding speed bar. No, uh, um, the other 
Oh, oh, I you might have it. more than one yes. over in there. Okay. Yes. So you, you click can. on it. And it mm-hmm. Yeah, you just basically put your mouse over it and all of the others will appear in that list. Okay, so let's say you're busy working and then someone calls and they say, um, oh, hi, I'm looking for a townhouse. I'd like to look within this price range. This is my requirement and all that stuff. Once you log into Matrix, you really don't have to go into search residential, general, and do it that way. Once you start getting used to the codes, and the codes are fairly simple, as you saw, A equals active, D equals detached, TH equals townhouse, and so on. Once you start getting used to those codes, you can actually go into anywhere where the speed bar sits and type right into it. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now you can put in the criteria in any order that you wish, except for bedrooms and bathrooms, okay? It always has to be bedrooms first, followed by bathrooms. Otherwise, you'll need a special code to designate which is which. So this person is saying that they want to look in Loudoun County, L-O, something for sale, sale, a townhouse, T-H, their price requirement, let's do 300 to 400,000, so that's the dollar sign, 300-400, and then three or more bedrooms, three plus space, two or more bathrooms, two plus, and let's add a garage in there too, let's just see, okay? So right now, remember I said that regarding the location, the county is there, the advertised subdivision is there, and but Postal City and zip code isn't there. Most likely it's going to be like, I'd like to live in Belmont, or I'd like to live in Broadlands, or something of that nature. So you, you can use ADV, advertised subdivision, ADV space, and then type in whatever you want there. And let's try Broadlands. Okay, you can also use the asterisk, that works as well. And once you hit the enter key, We'll see how many we get back. Wow, 267. Okay, so it's a quick way for me to get to those listings, just by typing in these codes. Now remember, if you do download the, the, the cheat sheet ahead of time, and just look over, it takes you a few minutes to look over and familiarize yourself with the codes, then just kind of play around with it. I think you'll pick it up pretty quickly. Where, where would you put active? Oh, it's just the letter A. You can put it anywhere in that speed bar. I happen to put it at the very first. Oh, I did put it. I'm sorry. It's good eye. Thank you. Okay. It was in my brain. It just didn't make it to my fingers. So you put that for, okay. So you could actually put it anywhere in the speed bar. I just put it at the front. Yeah. Uh, then you say it. Oh, I'm sorry. Not to. Yeah. Not to. Thank you for catching that. Other numbers like uh, raw or square footage. I don't have that issue. It's just beds and baths. Beds and baths, correct. So yeah. With garage, you must put G, G. and a uh, taxable square footage. You put some it's tax. I think C. it's like tax or something uh-huh. like that in front of it. Yeah. Yeah, That's exactly. The, the kind of track, yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah, so I would put the A anywhere in that speed bar. I just happened to choose the very first uh, space there. Okay? So now you quickly found your results. So, here's the other thing. Oh, do you have any questions about that? Just searching from scratch using the speed bar. It's fairly easy, you just need to recognize the codes to put in there. So the other thing I'd like to show you is, let me just go back to my uh, search here. I'm gonna revise this because I actually wanna start with a little fresher type of search. So let's clear this. And I'm gonna put in Loudon Active for Sale. Yes, okay. So let's pretend that I'm an agent and my primary area that I work in is Loudoun County. So about 80% of my searches tend to start off this way, Loudoun, active, for sale. And then I'll plug in the rest of the time, the rest of the stuff accordingly to whatever client, the client's needs are. At this point, if I wanted to, I can actually save a default on this screen so that these three things are always selected every time I go in to do my search. It saves me a little bit of time. So down at the bottom in this bar here, you'll see the little diskette icon. And right next to it is a link that says set default. If you click on that, it's going to give you three options. Set the currently selected search criteria as my starting default. Set current display and count per page as my starting default. Or you can reset to the system defaults. Now if you'd like to just set the criteria, then you'll choose the first option. Set currently selected search criteria as my starting default. And that will save these three things. See how this default criteria has been set. So every time I go in to conduct a residential general search using that specific general template, 
I will already have those three things pre-selected for me. Now keep in mind when you do this, you can only have one.